The building of the Catskill water system is a tale of heroism and heartbreak, political maneuvering, the loss of communities, brilliant engineering, and a quiet power struggle between a major city and a remote rural area. It involved thousands of stone cutters, bridge builders, railroad workers, tunnel diggers, and mule drivers. In scope and size, the building of the Ashokan Reservoir was said to rival the Panama Canal. By the time it was completed, 10,000 acres of land were claimed by the city. 2,000 people had to move their families, and over 500 homes, 35 stores, 10 churches, 11 schools, and five railroad stations were destroyed or moved to new locations. June 1st, 1905. Spring has come to the village of Brown's Station. Farmers work in the cornfields. Loggers haul wood from High Point Mountain for the local sawmills. Bluestone is cut from quarries in nearby West Hurley. And kids are swimming in the cold Asopus Creek. Within several years, this hamlet in the Asopus Valley of New York State will be gone. Farmhouses, barns, stables, town buildings, gardens will be hauled away, burned, or relocated. Even graves and bodies will be dug up and reinterred. Brown Station will be buried by water, water up to 100 feet deep, water for New York City and its millions of thirsty citizens 120 miles to the south. For now, Brown's Station is a peaceful, almost idyllic place. Residents do not fully understand how completely their lives will be changed how they will sacrifice their homes, farms, and heritage to a city that is desperate for fresh drinking water. Nothing will remain of the original Brown Station. Brown Station was in a quiet, tree-shaded valley, protected from the tensions of the world to the south. It was a typically beautiful Catskill community, with mountain vistas that inspired the Hudson River School of Painters and the artist community in nearby Woodstock. By contrast, the city was growing fast. Manhattan had merged with Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Staten Island in 1898. New York City was hot, dirty, and overcrowded in the summer of 1905. Immigrants had been pouring into the city for years, arriving by the boatload from across Europe. Most of the new arrivals were poor, with no formal education, crammed into slums. Many people were without sufficient water for cooking, bathing, and cleaning. The heat of summer made it seem that much worse. New York's Croton Reservoir System, some 42 miles to the north, had been supplying water to the city since 1842. Although a big help at first, the original Croton system could not meet the needs of the city. New reservoirs were built in Putnam and Westchester counties, including the new Croton Dam, which was well underway at the turn of the century. But 
New Yorkers traveled upstate throughout the 1800s in search of what they called healing water. Water was in fashion, pure, cold, refreshing water. Although people in the Catskills looked upon city residents with some mistrust, they relied on the city for much of their income. Sales of bluestone, cement, lumber, and farm products kept these mountain communities alive and prospering. Summer visitors came to the Catskill Mountains for hunting, fishing, and hiking the peaks of Overlook Mountain, Big Indian, and Mount Tremper. There were so many fish in the streams near Woodstock that in one day in 1879, a local fisherman named Fred Happy caught almost 200 trout. Once the Ulster and Delaware Railroad was completed, day trippers could reach the Catskills in a few hours. Tourism flourished. As early as 1887, the Scientific American had recommended getting water for the city from west of the Hudson River. And so they realized that um, this was a place where there was um, catchment areas, uh, you know, valleys and so on that could easily be dammed, a uh, great deal of rainfall, you know, 40, 60 some odd inches a year. And, uh, and so the move was made to really take over this area by eminent domain. <laughs> 